All right, the second part of this is the distance formula. We're going to use the distance formula and coordinate planes to try to find out how are these things related to triangles and different distances and lengths of segments. So in a coordinate plane, the distance d between two points x1, y1, and x2, y2 can be expressed like this. We're going to use d for distance. Not a big surprise there, but then what we're going to do is we're going to set this up <clears throat> as two differences. And if you recall, the segment length can be coordinated to like a ruler by the ruler postulate by subtracting the coordinates. And so what we are going to do is we're going to say x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And the square root of that is going to give us the distance between these two points or the length of this segment. Okay, this is derived from something called the Pythagorean theorem. But this is the general formula that we're going to use. And so this is going to be this part here is going to be the distance between the x coordinates and this part here is going to be the distance between the y coordinates and what that's going to help us do is come up with how long is it from point to point okay so here we go <clears throat> i've got a little bit of a graphic here and we have two examples okay one of them has points with it one of them does not once again if you are familiar with this and you would like to try to do this on your own before i go through it please feel free go ahead and pause it and then i'll have the answers for you right when you come back if not, roll through an example with me, then you can try the second one. <clears throat> or if you need the support, we can go through both of them. Okay, so we're going to find AB and CD. And so the first one is going to be AB, and I'm going to write a little bit smaller here because this is going to help us out. And so AB, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two coordinates. So I'm going to call this one x2, y2, x1, y1. And so I'm going to have 5 minus 0 squared plus... 1 minus 3 squared, okay? All that's underneath the square root. Now, I'm going to simplify. 5 minus 0, obviously 5 squared, plus, and 1 minus 3 is a negative 2 squared. And so what I've got here is I have 25 plus 9. And so that's going to give us, I'm sorry, 4. 25 plus 4. And that's going to give us square root of 29 okay and so a B is going to be square root of 29 and so a B is square root 29 okay now we need to find the length of CD and so in finding the length of CD I'm going to erase here so once again if you need to go back and pause it so we've got a B is square root of 29 I'll erase this one too write a little bit neater square root 29 Okay, now CD. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to assign them to their own values. And I'm going to say that this is x2, y2 now. I'm doing two separate calculations. And when I'm doing two separate calculations, here's my first one. So I'm going to compare to this. So now that I have this, I'm going to say that CD is equal to, and you can go ahead and leave a little bit more space in your notes. I just want to get both on one slide. And so I'm going to have CD is equal to square root of negative 3 minus negative 1 squared plus and negative 4 minus 1 squared okay once again all under the square root so square root of negative 3 minus negative 1 would be 2 squared or actually negative 2 squared ends up being the same and then we're gonna have negative 4 minus 1 would be 5 squared okay so what we've got is we have the square root of 4 plus 25 is equal to square root of 29. What does this tell us? Well, CD is also square root of 29. And they're asking us, determine if AB is equal to CD. Are they equal? Yes, they are. They are equal. So AB and CD are the same length using that formula. Okay, so once again, go ahead and pause it, try this one. I would really encourage you to try this one because this is really, 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 really a review of everything you've done in algebra and I think you can do this. So go ahead and try it. Okay, we are back. So I'm gonna find EF over here and thankfully down here I have a little bit more space so I'll be able to do that. EF, well first off, let's, let's write out our points. 
E is going to be at negative two comma one. F is going to be at, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, negative five comma five. And we're looking at G and H also, so G is going to be at negative one, negative two, and H is going to be at three, one. Now, EF is going to be equal to negative five minus negative two, okay? We're gonna square that. I'm gonna run out of room, so I gotta erase this little bit of this, okay? And I'm going to have plus, it's going to be 5 minus 1 squared. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. How am I doing? Well, let's see. Negative 5 minus a negative 2. So that's going to be negative 5 plus 2. So that's going to be negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. Not like the game. And that's going to be 9 plus 16. And that's going to be equal to square root of 25, which is equal to 5. Now, if you're inexperienced with uh, working with square roots, this would be a good time to write a question down on the margin. Why did he add these? Why did he do this? And we can talk about it in class, or you can look up another tutorial video, etc., etc. Now, let's talk about GH. Blue is a bad color for this. We'll do it in green. GH is equal to square root of 3 minus a negative 1 squared plus 1 minus negative 2 squared. And that's going to be equal to negative 3 plus, or 3 plus 1, which would be 4 squared plus. 1 minus negative 2, which would be 3 squared, which is going to be equal to square root of 16 plus 9, equal to square root of 25, and once again, equal to 5. Watch how I do this. In order to write this, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that EF is congruent to segment GH. So G E F segment E F is congruent to segment G H. Okay. Next piece, right triangle stuff. This should be a review. So I'm going to go through it rather quickly. We have a right angle marked by this box here that tells us that my legs are going to be a and B. They're called the legs. They form the right angle. Okay, and then I'm going to have C. C is the hypotenuse. And it is also the longest side. Hypotenuse is always the longest side. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with here. And the Pythagorean theorem looks like this. And it's going to be, the Pythagorean theorem is going to say that if we take a squared plus b squared, it's equal to c squared. Leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. Okay, that's the Pythagorean theorem. So this is a plug and chug, just a formula going in, as long as we know the lengths of the sides. So when we find distance, basically we're saying, we're gonna use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance to the nearest 10th from A to B. Well, what does that mean for us? As far as moving from A to B, let's see what this means. We see that we have a right triangle here. And because we have a right triangle, we know that leg squared so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. How does that help us? Well, we know that to find this length here, we are going to use the points along these two sides, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a is negative two comma three, 
and b is 2 comma negative 2. And I'm going to use the distance formula because I know that in a right triangle, this is the relationship that exists. So AB is equal to the square root of 2 minus a negative 2 squared plus negative 2 minus 3 squared. Okay? Equal to when I square root this, I've got 4 squared plus negative 5 squared, 16 plus 25, still under the square root. It's the square root of 41. Okay? But I want the nearest tenth. So I'm going to simplify this. And when I simplify it, I put it in my calculator. I'm going to punch it in. And I am going to get 6.4. Okay, next example. Here's two more. You can go ahead and work on these. Pause, rewind, look back in your notes, use your notes, try to do it in your head, whatever you have to do. Take control of the situation for yourself. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and roll right through it. This is gonna be part three, so I'm cutting it here. If you know how to do it, don't watch part three. It's gonna be, part three is gonna be the explanation of these two, okay? We'll see you then.